So today we're going to present the Arthrex VET OrthoLine system, specifically the 3.0 titanium plate. As you can see here, we have a 14 hole plate. In this plate, we have a bending plug. Uh, this plate contains a universal hole as well as a compression hole and a slide hole. There's two separate holes for K wires for temporary fixation of the plate to the bone. The second device is just a standard drill sleeve for a 2.3 millimeter drill bit that will be used for both the cortical screws, locking screws, as well as variable angle locking screws. This is the locking drill guide used with the 2.3 millimeter bit. And finally, this is the variable angle locking drill guide used with the same bit. A T10 star drive is included for driving the screw, as well as a depth gauge and standard bending irons. A 3.0 tap is included with the set for hard cortical bone. Standard reduction forceps are also present for temporary plate fixation, a standard K wire, as well as a BB tack anchor are provided. The screw box contains cortical, variable angle locking, and locking screws. We're going to demonstrate repair of a sawbone model consisting of a short oblique fracture in the mid tibial diaphysis using the Arthrex ortho line. This is a 3.0 millimeter titanium plate. The fracture's been reduced and the plate's been secured to the bone with a lobster clamp. We're going to first place a BB tack in the slide hole, which is on the short end of the beveled plate. You'll see at the distal end of the plate down here, there's a longer beveled end for MEPO application. If we were performing a MEPO application in this case, we would slide from proximal down to distal using the uh, distal end of the plate in this case. So first we'll secure with the BB tack. This is the slide hole here. We're gonna place this in the center. Next, we'll go ahead and remove our clamp. And we'll use a form of secondary fixation for the distal aspect of the plate. Now we have several options. We can put a BB tack in, we can use this K wire hole or a cannulated bending plug. So this is a bending plug that's been placed into the plate. It has a screw cannulation and we're going to place a K wire into it. So unicortical placement of the K wire secures the plate to the bone. Following placement of the BB tack, the plate can be adjusted distally to proximally to allow for alignment of the plate holes at the fracture gap. We've placed a K wire in the cannulated bending plug distally. And now we're going to place a cortical screw in the slide hole. So we'll pull our BB tack. We'll drill with a 2.3 millimeter drill bit in the standard drill sleeve bicortically. So once drilled, the depth gauge is used to measure the hole. And in this case, we're measuring a 26 screw. So we'll place a 28. So just prior to tightening our screw, we're able to get a fine adjustment using the slide hole to then apply the plate to the bone. Once we're happy, with the placement of our plate relative to our fracture segment, we'll go ahead and tighten the cortical screw at the slide hole. Next, we'll apply a locking screw in any of these proximal holes. We're going to use the locking drill guide in the proximal hole. Drill with the same diameter drill bit. Repeat our measurement process. The locking screw in this case is magenta. The variable angle screw is a more golden color, which we'll apply later. The screw should be slightly recessed to the plate. The Arthrex compression hole provides a moderate amount of compression. Thus, the surgeon should be familiar with this application prior to implant placement. In this case, we're going to place this in full compression. And if we look up towards the fracture site, we have a moderate gap.
prior to tightening our compression screw fully, we're going to remove the K-wire from the cannulated bending plug. As we tighten our compression screw, you can see that the fracture segment compresses and we'll remove our lobster clamp. Next, we're going to add locking or non-locking cortical screws to the proximal and distal fragments. We'll remove our plate bending plug prior to doing so. The locking screw can be driven by hand or using a power attachment. The final tightening of the screw should be done by hand. Again, that screw should sit just inset to the plate. The conical shaped drill guide is placed for using the variable angle locking screw. This conical guide allows us to freehand drill 12 degrees from the center in any direction. We use the same 2.3 millimeter drill bit to penetrate the cis and trans cortex. The guide is removed and we measure as shown. The trajectory of the hole is noted prior to removal of the drill guide so that this trajectory can be matched with the variable angle locking screw. The locking screw is then placed and it is a golden color which will indicate that it is variable angle and can be deviated from uh, the typical locking screw which sits at a neutral axis. In a fracture configuration such as this, when we have one millimeter or less of a fracture gap and we've compressed, two to three bicortical screws can be placed. When a bridging plate is used, three to four bicortical screws are recommended. So in this case, we're gonna choose to place four screws proximally and four screws distally because we have the bone stock to do so. So this concludes our repair of a mid short oblique diaphyseal tibial fracture using the 3.0 Arthrex OrthoLine plate with four bicortical screws placed proximally to include three locking screws and one cortical screw and two locking screws placed distally as well as one variable angle locking screw as well as a compression cortical screw.